headlines. There's a big story when it comes to uh, a Wells Fargo analyst by the name of Stephen K. Hall. Uh, he's claiming that Disney parks may take up to two years to return to normal attendance uh, in the aftermath of the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, K. Hall told investors that he doesn't think parks can get back to anything close to full capacity until testing or vaccines are far more ubiquitous and zero park attendance uh, for the later half of fiscal 2020 and only 50 percent of uh, capacity in fiscal 2021. Uh, for reference, Disney's current fiscal year could end around September, October as it stands. Wells Fargo is projecting that the current closures will last until at least then. Um, Katrina a uh, a lot to unpack there when it comes down to this analyst sort of making the prediction that you know attendance probably isn't going to rally back for uh potentially two years at this point and then to know that uh disney parks might likely remain closed until september october does that surprise you kind of uh like <laughs> i really want i really want everything to get better and back to normal as fast as possible so for me reading that I like kind of rolled my eyes and I was like, Oh, Jesus, like, I just can't imagine it taking that long for the parks to reopen. But honestly, in reality, it probably could. Uh, but just like 9-11, Disneyland and like, you know, took a hit and a lot of people didn't show up for quite a while and then slowly started getting back to normalcy like after a year. So I feel like this was even worse. Uh, well, I'm not gonna say it's worse, but it, it affected- It will, it will it, affect them it, more, yeah. It affected more, like more people. I'm not saying that one didn't affect a lot of people, but I'm saying that this, like everybody is like in quarantine, a lot of people are furloughed. And and again, it's just everybody's scared of going out because they don't want to get sick. And I clearly don't want to get sick either. And so I think that a lot of uh, people are going to put on hold their vacations because they, sadly, a lot of people got, you know, they're not earning a, enough money and saving enough money uh for vacations anymore so they might have to delay it a year so that's gonna like trickle down to disney and universal and all these other places you know like cruise lines and everything so i can see it taking a couple years for it to go back to normalcy um even if they do do a vaccine you know there's things that are saying that this is going to happen like every season uh which is kind of crazy to think about uh so hopefully there is going to be a vaccine to kind of help alleviate that and like help bring back normalcy, but it, I, I don't, I don't want to say they're right for two years, but most likely. <laughs> Yeah, I know that uh, going into the 50th anniversary of Walt Disney World, Garrett, uh, you know, there were big plans for uh, a lot happening going into next year uh, for the Walt Disney World property and um, to really be pulling people in. And, you know, it was expected to be probably more crowded than ever as parks really have kind of hit a swell point in recent years. And um, that's coast to coast, by the way. You go to Disneyland or you go to Walt Disney World, even in times that were often considered off peak now very, very busy. Well, uh, COVID-19 is sort of taking care of that with the shutdown. Um, are you somebody that sort of subscribes to this idea that it's going to take two years to maybe rally back and um, even then probably not open until September, October? I think two years is a very good timeline because you don't want to predict something that, that oh, it only takes six months and then it's a lot longer because that looks bad. Um, I think the analyst was very good in the observations that it could take two years. I'm just thinking that um, if a vaccine does become available and then is able to be like produced in massive quantities so that way everyone could have this, uh, I think that will help speed up the process of bringing the parks back to some sense of normalcy. Um, the thing I worry about is international travel because domestic travel is one thing, but when you add international where you have people come from different countries, different backgrounds, different cultural backgrounds, um, a lot more interactions, especially when you're on a tubular, like when you're in a still, when you're in a sealed container with, rep with repossessed air, that kind of doesn't really help with making things better. I think- You mean an airplane? Years, yeah, yeah, an air, <laughs> I wanted to, <laughs> um, but yeah, two years does seem very real. I think the 50th anniversary will help a lot just because uh, it will drive people in there. And the beauty about Disney is that people look to Disney for hope because Disney is, I, I remember when the great recession was happening, sorry, I'm just jumping around, but the great recession, 
Uh, the economy was down in the U.S., but people still went to Disneyland and Disney World for the 50th and the Year of a Million Dreams because it was that spectacular. So two years, probably likely, but I think around the maybe in one year from now, they'll start to see a little bit more because it's going to be the beginning of summer. I think people would be like, you know what? It's a little bit better. It's been under control for a while. As long as there's not like a second outbreak, uh, things should go well. But two years does seem realistic, unfortunately. Yeah, a real interesting uh, point to make is that, you know, coming out of 9-11, while uh, I'm not somebody that thinks that these two are, are at all relatable in regards to tragedy level and and the type of thing that occurred obviously um coming out of 9 11 there was uh from a travel perspective you know a, a real slump people weren't traveling people weren't weren't going to big public places um out of fear and so that took a while to really recover from and the one thing for disney parks that really pulled people back in was that 50th anniversary for disneyland and you know it became the happiest homecoming on earth worldwide and that i i think was a real signal for the first time for um, the the public to sort of get back to a sense of normalcy. I think it did take quite a few years for people to really get comfortable again going out into major public venues. And Disneyland, uh, I know, was suffering with a huge attendance slump. And there was just so much that um, they were doing to try and entice people to come. But when there's fear, there's fear, you know. And so it, it took the 50th anniversary at that point to bring people out. Granted, the 50th anniversary was in 2005. I believe they started it in 04, you know, the Disney calendar. Um, but I know that they started it uh, around that time. So it took a few years to really react. Um, we might be looking at something similar here. I'm not necessarily sure because obviously we're dealing with a health crisis and not necessarily an act of terrorism. Um, but we will see. Two years yeah, think, seems to be a long oh. time. I feel like, um, you know, with 9-11, I know, like you said, they're not entirely comparable, but, you know, we had the fear in 9-11 and we have the fear now, but I feel like a major difference is we are also don't have the money anymore. You know, mm -hmm. 7 million people close to are going into unemployment uh, in, in America now, and that's uh, that's a much bigger hit to people than, than what you know, than the monetary thing that happened in during 9-11. So I think that's also something else to take into account that it's not just the fear, but also people ain't going to have the money, you know? Another great point. Absolutely. And uh, I think oh. uh, when it comes down to it, you know, there's a lot of concern about this. What does a park experience look like? Is it going to be limited to begin with? Are they going to reduce their own um, capacity? You know, are they going to reduce the number of people that can visit? Will that encourage people to sort of shy away and think, well, they're not even letting in a whole lot of people. Maybe I shouldn't go. Maybe I should wait this out. Garrett, what do you think? Um, I think when the parks do reopen, they will not have the maximum capacity that they had before. Say, for example, New Year's Eve, you could roughly fit around 100,000 people. I, I don't know the exact number for the fire code, but you can fit around that many people. I could see them taking at least a 30 to 40% cut on top of that. So instead of there being hundred thousand you would you'd only have sixty thousand inside the park to sort of prevent people from condensing into tight cramped spaces which then leads to possible uh infection the the overall thing is people want to feel safe and the only way they can do that is by limiting the amount the amount of people that can come into these spaces so the parks will be open but they'll have very limited things limited hours uh limited maybe availability and the sense of how many people can get into the park they will probably be like maybe at fifty thousand people at epcot we stop letting people in just because we want everyone to have plenty of room to get around you don't want people cramped up because then people get nervous about other people touching them so on and so forth so there's definitely going to be a lot of social distancing implemented into the parks that's what i feel to all who come to this happy place Welcome.